just for you, Julian, we will start already. <laughs> hey, folks, welcome along to Friday Beers. Uh, I must say I'm a little bit scared about this one. So grab your beers. I've got mine and uh, let's see where it goes. So, yeah, this week, sadly, we learned of the closure of South Africa's only craft malting house and with it the loss of 17 jobs. In order for craft beer scene to move to the next level here, we needed Walt Smalts to continue to grow and improve on their selection of local malts. Sadly, the lockdown proved too much for a business already struggling to operate in a tough market. The lockdown and the total alcohol ban in particular continues to be devastating for our craft breweries and their staff with no end in sight to this unjust regulation. The future of craft beer in South Africa is bleak. For millions of South Africans unable to feed their families, um, the present is also bleak. Fortunately, the craft beer scene has stepped up and community heroes are turning their brew houses into soup kitchens, feeding thousands of starving people. Andre from Woodstock started this up some weeks back now with others following suit, and he'll be joining us shortly. He's just on his way back from the soup kitchen. Um, there's a link in the comments below to um, support Woodstock Brewery's soup kitchen, so please go and check that out. I'm also joined today by David, our favorite Yorkshireman, who has been recording brewing related YouTube videos for some time now. I'll pop a link in the comments below as well to, uh, to his channel. Uh, go along and follow that one and uh, check that out. David made it out to Brayton last year for, for our Fools and Fans Beer Festival and was also due to join us again this year. Um, but it's great that we can at least virtually uh, chat to him today. So thanks for joining us, David. And, um, and lastly, we're joined by the head fool himself and owner of Old Potters, Trevor. So yeah, welcome along, guys. Um, let me unmute you so you can actually talk. There we go. Um, yeah, Trevor, let's start with you then. Give us a bit of an update from a owner brewer's perspective on the craft beer scene here. So yeah, I, I mean, it's very sad, but there's always a little silver lining. So there's uh, been fantastic uh, renewed interest from, from new people joining home brewing clubs, not only in South Africa, but around the world. So if you speak to other home brewers in the uh, United States and United Kingdom, uh, there's tremendous uh, interest. So hopefully that uh, is, there's a little undercurrent of interest that sustains itself moving forward. And I think South Easters is seeing that, Warthogs is seeing that. Uh, so that's yeah. good. Yeah, I mean, that's where, every, that's where everybody started, eh? So, yeah. yeah. Mentioned the, the, so hopefully all those pineapple brewers are going to move into grains and uh, do things properly when, uh, when this, this all ends. The, Stop the, making the, the, wine and make beer. Yeah, Learn right. to make beer. The other thing that you <laughs> mentioned was the shutting down of Volts Malt. That's tremendously sad. They, they, were, sad. they were backed up actually by a huge corporation, SSK, which is a cooperate, a sort of an agricultural cooperative. So okay. they must have been, it's, it's, they must have really been struggling already. And this was obviously the death knell of their business, which is very sad. As, as everyone says, we needed, we needed to start um, pumping that because as people have mentioned, when uh, the competition thing expires with AB InBev, who knows what's going to happen to all the malts that uh, they promised to, to uh, let us use. Yeah. I mean, we need, you know, from, from a cost point of view, obviously local malting is, uh, has a big implication on uh, on the cost price of uh, of craft beer here, yeah, but then also from a innovative point of view, you know, to to actually have a malting house locally is 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 also critical, right? I mean, to do different things and uh, and and more f uh, locally focused uh, grains and yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So also joined by is uh, is Dave here. Dave, thanks for coming along, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Great to, have, uh, great to outnumber the uh, the South Africans currently with a couple of English voices here. Yes, we're from South Yorkshire. It's God's County, this. But most people <laughs> will know that. What are you yeah. drinking, Dave? Cheshire Homebrew. Um, what am I Cheshire drinking? Homebrew. Uh, it is a homebrew. I've made this. I don't know whether we're allowed to say, but it, it's, um, it's a clone of the Acre Stout. Yep, you can say that. Uh, one of my heroes, Bruce Collins of Stellenbosch Brewing Company. I brewed it twice now and it's absolutely excellent. It's not as good as the one from the source, but it, it's not far off. So cheers to Bruce cheers, and everybody. 
Yeah, we did a video uh, a couple of years back with Bruce um, putting that recipe online. So yeah, you can definitely say that, uh, that that's from him. Yeah, he was, we actually spoke just recently about doing a different beer at some point uh, when all this, when, when we can actually do alcohol related things. We, we were talking about making another one of his beers on the grandfather, scaling it down again, because yeah, I had great fun. He had, mm -hmm. he had a lot of fun and, uh, and it was great to see people like yourself and a uh, uh, guy in Canada or New Zealand um, brewing, brewing it as well. So, yeah. Well, that was actually what attracted me to your channel. The fact that you were going to breweries and they were giving you, actually giving you a recipe of, of their signature beer. Um, I tried it in uh, the UK uh, and you just got nowhere. They just did not want to share any information. I went yeah. to um, Otter, Otter Brewery in Devon and said I'd like, I wanted to clone their beer, I mean, just for home use. And they sent me a lovely uh, email back, really pleasant from a girl in the office, and told me the recipe. And they used um, water, uh, barley, and yeast. I was very impressed with that. So basically, I had to, uh, I had to make up the recipe myself. But, uh, it's not a secret here, but... That's what I like about some of the South African breweries. They share the recipes. And to me, it, it just helps promote their beer. It's not stealing. Yeah. Them. That's my opinion but, anyway. But I also think, like, I mean, our, our industry is very young and uh, everyone, everyone's kind of grown by sharing or having ideas shared with them. And mm. I think that that attitude's kind of carried on, right, Trevor? I mean, you were the first one. Yeah. To do one yeah. of those brewing videos with me, and uh, you were delighted to to get involved. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And then, and then, tell us about this beer, Trevor. So, so that was a, a, well, I, well, a lovely. It's not really a beer. It's a it's a half half beer, half um, uh, uh, mead. So it's yep. a braggart, and uh, we managed to do that with Danny Woodendall uh, from Bearded. He was Bread. on last week. He was on last week. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, correct. He was on so here last week, yeah. I, yeah. I, saw, I saw him. And then also Rob uh, Cass was there. And uh, and you're, you were there as well, weren't you? Sort of, yeah, in spirit. In, I was, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we, ma drunk. we managed to get 50 kilograms of uh, crystalline honey into a, into a kettle, and which was quite challenging. And that's already over, that's, that's over a year old. It's about a year and a half old. It's quite a high August, ABV. August 2018. 2018. It's nearly two years. Yep. And uh, quite high ABV. It's changed quite a lot. Uh, we, we added some chocolate nibs as well, which I think was maybe a mistake, but that comes through quite strongly. Uh, you get the honey, you get the aromatics of the honey still, which I think was quite difficult to keep those volatiles in the product. So they, they, we added it especially late in the kettle to, to try and uh, maintain that as much as possible. But it's, it comes in at about 9, 10% ABV from what I remember. Nine and, and a half, yeah, a, bang, bang on, halfway in between there. It's quite a nice winter drink. It's quite uh, roasty and toasty and meaty and... Um, I like the chocolate stuff. notes. I like the chocolate yeah. notes. They, um, I think that was actually your idea, so maybe I don't like them, but... Uh, <laughs> do you like the chocolate? I do, yeah. I think it comes through really nicely, yeah. It, it, it kind of balances that, the honey. too much, maybe. Maybe. I also get, um, didn't we soak the chocolate in brandy, if I remember rightly? Yeah, we, we did, just to, just to try and uh, to kind of uh, sterilize uh, it, sanitize it. Melt it and integrate it into, into the fermenter, because we put the chocolate nibs in the fermenter. But it's, 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 quite, it's something quite interesting. It's neat. Because it kind of gives you that kind of barrel aged, um, like folk, fake barrel aged um, uh, impression with the, I think, with the. Possibly with the brandy, you know, or maybe just because it's yeah. high. Because we didn't barrel age it; eh? it was never put in a barrel. No, 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 no. no. It was all in the fermenters, and then we've just left it in bottles. I think it's changing all the time, and I think it's quite uh, fun and interesting. I'd never heard of a braggart before. I spoke to uh, the home brewer called Pai, uh, who's a very keen yes. braggart um, yeah. proponent. And also so mead, mead in general, hey, with her. Correct, and and yeah. then I stumbled. I went down a rabbit hole of meads. Uh, and you know, meeting a guy called Ernst Thompson in in Cape Town, and there's a whole South African Mead uh, Association, which has got, it's got something like twenty to fifty members. Very very technical people. It's really, but there's a huge 
there's a huge meat community in South Africa, and it's 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 actually the fastest growing craft drink in the state. So so it's it's um interesting. It's an interesting field. I don't know if you've dabbled with meadery at all, Dave. No, I haven't. But I I have uh, some friends on YouTube in the states that they're big on mead, very big on mead. Uh, so I, they go through all the process. Uh, there's one guy in particular I'm very friendly with, and uh, he uh, he gives me loads of advice if I want to, to make some mead, but I never have done, I must admit. But I'm not saying I never will. I probably will try it at some point. Yeah, I'd love to get into uh, a bit of mead making. One of your mates on YouTube, Cheshire Homebrew, is along. Oh, along yes, too. Cheshire Dave. Yeah. I've been to his house. <laughs> with Sophia. It's 28 miles from me. Oh, wow. Well. I think I saw that video actually where you went where you went over there. Yeah, that is he, he's very he's a top guy, this chap. Top guy. He remembers he remembers your otter story quite it was quite funny. Oh yes. <laughs> I, I was a bit upset just to know that they made it with water, hops, barley, and yeast, really. Was, revelation, you know, revelation. Oh, I, I nearly died of shock, actually. But it didn't <laughs> stop me. Sorry, sorry, sorry Dave. No, I was just saying, it didn't stop me uh, having to go. I, I made two versions, and I made some good beers along the way. I'm not saying that they were represented, the Otter Ale, in any way, shape, or form, but I made two good beers in the attempt, so that's all that matters. <laughs> so, so, good question for you here, Dave, from William Yell in, uh, in the Eastern Cape, I think. Um, please share a recipe and any tips on brewing a Yorkshire Bitter. Have you done one on your channel? I have actually, well, I haven't done a Yorkshire bitter. Now, you, I've got a Yorkshire bitter that I made. It's only been in two weeks. Two weeks ago, I made this. And yeah. it's called my lockdown bitter. And it is based on a Yorkshire bitter. Um, I can, in a, <laughs> in a soul barrel growler as well. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> I've actually got one to try a bit later on. And basically, with a bitter, it's as bitter as you want to go. You, you, you put the hops in to get the IBUs you want. But you're just using British hops. Uh, Maris Otter, Pale Malt or Golden Promise, um, something like that. And just use um, a bit of crystal, EBC 150 I usually go for. And uh, on this one that I've just brewed, I put a small bit of uh, chocolate in about 80 grams, 90 grams, something like that. And it's it's a beauty. It's got uh, progress and challenger in at the start of the boil. And then 10 minutes before, I gave it some Bramling Cross, another famous British hop. And then at zero minutes, I gave it 50 grams to Whirlpool. And it's a cracking beer. It's 4.6%. They're very, very simple to brew, a, a British bitters. And... When I have a failure, when I'm at the moment, I'm brewing a New England IPA called Break Nente. And if it's a failure, I shall resort back to brewing a, another bitter to, to uh, sort of make myself feel a little bit better. But I think the, uh, they're, very, they're very easy bitters to brew, actually. Very isn't easy. like a bitter, despite the name, isn't particularly bitter. It's a malt forward beer that uh, the bitterness is, I mean, if you're comparing it to Correct. like a West Coast IPA that's, Extremely bitter. It's nowhere near that kind of level. No, it's not that bitterness level. You're no. right. This one I've done was uh, around 35 IBUs. It's not over bitter. Uh, I've just brewed a Guinness, and that was 45. It's you can brew a bitter around that. The, the most yeah. bitter bitter I've ever drunk was Barnsley bitter. Uh, you can't. You can actually buy it from Acorn Brewery, which is our nearest local craft brewer. And they sell it in the local supermarkets here. That is a really uh, bitter, bitter. And they just use Maris Otter Crystal and some Challenger hops. They don't use anything else. Uh, that was one I was going to clone, actually. But again, they won't give the recipe. That um, the yeast apparently has been passed from generation to generation, and they seem to have got hold of some. But there's a, there's a I could talk for an hour about that. So <laughs> there's another brewery in Sheffield does Barnsley Bitter, uh, Stansill Brewery. Uh, and there, theirs isn't as bitter as Acorn Brewery's Barnsley Bitter. So there's a bit of rivalry going on. And some people prefer one, some people prefer the other. 
But bitters, yeah, very, very easy to brew. Very easy. It's quite a bit of interest. They, they, did, sorry, did, did, okay. did your homebrew shop stay completely open during your, your lockdown? I have two main, two main um, venue shops that I use. One is the Malt Miller in Swindon and one is the home brew shop in Farnborough, Hampshire. Both have stayed open to a certain point with restrictions. You can order, for, for example, on one site, I think the Malt Miller, you can order at any time there anything but malts. If you want grains, you've got to wait till three o'clock in the afternoon before you put an order in. If you want anything but malts, then you can order at any time. Now, the homebrew shop, I had an order from them last week, uh, the other week, actually. I think I ordered it um, Friday late. And, no, was it Friday? Yeah, and it came Monday. It came, like, within a few days. But when I've been on this week, they said that they shut the site down because they're trying to catch up with orders because they've got reduced staff because of the COVID. So, yeah, you can still get, you can still get supplies, but not as easily as it was. And it's all postal. You can't go to the shop and uh, get it from the shop. Well, no, it, it is mainly postal. The other week I did uh, send my wife out uh, to the local uh, place in Barnsley called Wilco. It's Wilkinson. And they have a small home rule section. And she got me some Munton's Jervin yeast. So she had to queue, which she wasn't very happy about. This told to me to social distance in uh, Malarkey <laughs> and then when she got in she bought me the uh, I said well while you're there you might as well get two packets <laughs> two packets <laughs> of Jervin yeast uh, which cost me a fiver uh, so yeah I can I can get yeast and a few other bits but basically it's online if you want anything like grains or hops or stuff like that and the malt miller are quite interesting eh? they 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 put up a lot of recipes of commercial beers uh, on their website. You've had one of the Verdant beers kits from their their website before, and you've you've uploaded recipes, I think, as well, eh? Yes, I uh, I my claim to fame for South Africa's benefit is that at, uh, I asked them to put um, Steph's uh, hoppy wheat on on their uh, recipe uh, uh, list, and they did that. They were very good and. They actually added uh, an extra packet of yeast because I hadn't put enough yeast in. I think it, it was, I put one packet and it needed two. And they yeah. brought the price down to 25 quid. So you can buy the hoppy wheat as a kit. Everything comes. And it, apparently they're out of stock at the moment. It's that popular. <laughs> but yes, they, 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 I think the, the, the book I sent you a few months ago, they've yep. got all those recipe kits that you can buy. So you're not wasting anything. You're not buying a bit of this and a bit of that and then having to throw everything to one side, what you don't use. It's it's all packed ready for you. Uh, and yeah, the Dant, they do a pulp uh, kit. And yep. um, what else? Oh, I've had uh, Thornbridge Brewery. I had a Kieron. on. Now there's a story about that. I put a video up and brewed that. And just before I was about to transfer it and uh, bottle it, uh, I had a bit of a catastrophe and it all ended up on the Garrett's floor. So, uh, but luckily a good friend of mine on YouTube saw the video and he sent me another kit at his own expense. So, <laughs> that, yeah. yeah, which leads me on to say, that's why I love brewing. You've always got a friend out there, even if you never meet them. You've always got a good <laughs> friend. They'll share their ideas, they'll help you out. I mean, I've got a guy in Devon, he's so good, a uh, very technical guy. Anything I need to know, I just ask him. Uh, it's as simple as that. And he, he tells me straight away, which I think is part of the reason I love brewing. Cheshire Homebrew says that the JW Lee's bitter that he did wasn't too dissimilar from a Yorkshire bitter, pale malt, chocolate and 50 grams of East Kent Goldings. That's right. I've got that recipe and I've got the book probably that he, he got it from the camera book of Real Ale. Oh, is that in that one, book. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't actually brewed that uh, that one, but I do tend to f follow what David at Cheshire Home Brew brews. Um, if he brews one one month, 
I'll try it the next next month. Um, at the moment, in the in my garage, I've got a Bateman's um, Victory Ale at six point four percent. Um, that's it's got a taste of pear drops and fruit about it, but it's rather strong. So it, it's only at three weeks. I'm going to leave it another three before I try it. But yeah, what do you what are you bringing at, at, at the moment? I, I, how often are you brewing at the moment, Dave? Well, I'm not, at the moment, I, I bottled some Guinness yesterday, uh, which turned out at 3.8% ABV. Very smooth. I think it's going to be a nice drink, but I was a bit disappointed. I wanted 4.1, 4.2. However, the, one, the big one, I think I mentioned it a bit earlier, is the Break and Enter, which is a New England IPA. And I've currently got that. Well, I'm looking at it now. I'm looking at my fridge straight in front of me, and it's sat in there at one degree, chilling down for the next four days. And that, believe it or not, was uh, the recipe was given to me from a guy called Mike, who's uh, probably in charge of this video. <laughs> yeah, so, we brewed that one with uh, with Richmond Hill. Um, that's right. Yeah, that was a couple of years ago. We keep threatening to do it again, but uh, but Neil keeps blowing me off. So uh, we'll see. Uh, I've noticed the it is starting to drop out now, all the uh, yeasts and the proteins, whatever. It's starting to get a bit clearer at the top. But it's only been in a day at one degree, and the smell is tremendous. However, uh, I was aiming for 6.6, .6 and I'm, I'm sure it's uh, going to be about 7.1, so we'll have to see. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure we were aiming for about 7, and we ended up with 6.6, .6, so you're probably, you're probably more on the money. Yeah. I'm going to give a few out, probably to David at Cheshire Old Brew will get one. And then there's another few guys who review beers uh, far better than I am. They'll get them. So it, it will be reviewed on YouTube eventually. Um, but I'm really excited about it. Uh, I can't wait to get it in bottles. And I'll give it two weeks, this one, because you've got to drink hoppy beers fast, haven't you, really? Because they fade. I think yeah. I put, I think it's had 500 grams exactly. Of hops in, it's at two hundred queens in, and then a hundred of citra, hundred of equinot, and hundred of Eldorado. So it's had five hundred. Yeah, it's an expensive beer to make that one. It was uh, yeah, seven point yeah. two <laughs> kilogram grain beer. <clears throat> Rowley says, "Bring back breaking enter." We will, Rowley. I, I, I'll twist Neil's arm at some point. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I, will, I will review it online. Online, I'll do a YouTube video, and, and well, actually, I'm doing a grain to glass. I've got the bits on my phone uh, and obviously when I get it in the bottle and I actually drink it I'll put it all together and put it on YouTube so it'll be I a drink to glass video. Sounds good. Mike talk us through your um through your your floor device I, I, I managed oh, I to that. get a yeah. taste of taste of that I mean that is thoroughly so I, did a video, I did a video for that one I think um I think I think I need to just I think I've done the tasting video. I just need to release that. But um, yeah, it's um, it's a take on a so Florida Vice is pretty much a Berlin Vice, except um, with fruit added to the to the ferment. Whereas uh, Berlin Vice, they they would normally add, they would normally serve it with fruited syrups um, at like at the bar stage. Um, so it's a kettle soured um, wheat beer. It was. Uh, I think 50 odd percent of the grain bill was, or at least 50 percent of the grain bill was wheat. Um, and yeah, kettle soured it overnight uh, with lactobacillus. And um, I took it really tart because um, I like really tart beer. And uh, often when you do a more commercial one, you kind of uh, edge on the side of caution a bit more and uh, don't try to go too tart. But this one, you know, was for lockdown, so it was only really going to be me and Sarah drinking it. So we uh, we went <laughs> quite low, um, but yeah, uh, I think we added strawberries, um, blueberries, and blackberries. It's basically the three fruits that I had left in the freezer. So it was a, a kilogram of each. If I make it again, um, I would add more fruit and maybe just two varieties, just to keep it simple. So maybe like stick to the blackberries and the blueberries, two two kilos of each. Um, and I would definitely ferment with USO5. I fermented with WBO6 yeast because um, it's I had slurry from the vice beer I'd brewed, 
and I thought I could try and get away with fermenting it cold and end up with a clean result. But there's still a little clovey phenolic there that just bugged me. So, so I would. I thought it was delicious. I mean, I I, I managed to. I mean, you had that uh, hemorrhoid problem. I had to come and tend to. Uh, yesterday so and uh, break lockdown but uh, it was quite it was, serious it, it? yeah it, it was it was delicious it was, it was very clean to me and, uh, and there was very little phenols i see uh, i see andre is nearly about to join us which is good news we can have three awesome of, we can uh, talk soup yeah we're gonna have three Here of beer's most curmudgeonly men on the show michael you trevor Scott and andre Fury and andre <laughs> fulgun i'm going gonna for be another beer three out of three <laughs> Mark, David thinks that you're, um, sorry, Trevor thinks that you're as grumpy as me. <laughs> it's, you, it's you, Mark, and, and Andre are, are similarly, of similar curmudgeonly temperaments. My favorite word, curmudgeonly. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't agree with you. I don't, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, Mike, what, Mark, what if, if, we can, if we can just turn the, the, the tables on you? I mean... For feral, are you, are you have you got plans to to continue? Or you, I mean, you're not going to package that uh, your Florida device. No, that was a purely a homebrew. Uh, but 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 before lockdown, we did a um, a similar Berliner Weisse, Cape Weisse, we called it, um, style with um, the wine fief with Ewan from the wine fief and with um, Olaf from Franschuk, um, and that was actually brewed for fools and fans. But we we added. Uh, Viognier grapes from um, that Ewan sourced from a, a winery, which I can't remember the name of off the top of my head. Now, um, and they were <clears throat> they were beautiful grapes, and uh, that beer was tasting great. And I don't think it's going to have too much of an issue with it, some extra age. It's currently sat in, in kegs, so it'll bulk age. Um, Where's that in uh, in uh, in Franschuk? Um Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got it. I think I have to visit uh, there as well. As soon as we, um, as soon as we are able to transport beer um, or transport alcohol, then we'll package that and uh, and make a plan to get it out. Whether that's whether that's at Best Craft Beer or whether that's at French Brewery itself or or whether that's at Fools and Fans, I guess it'll just be dictated to us on based on how we can sell beer again. But going back to Farrell, no, I mean I I, I have lots of fun doing those brews and. Uh, I have no intention to stop, but uh, I think initially when lockdown or when uh, when this prohibition is over, um, I don't think it's probably the right time to for me to make beers. We need to be supporting uh, the guys that that have a livelihood to make out of it, and uh, okay. and if I can do that in some way through collabs, maybe then uh, then that might be an idea. But I um, I don't think making solo beers then and having a um, something competing in the marketplace is probably the right thing to do. But, uh, but yeah, no, we'll definitely do something. Um, uh, I think collabs, is probably, collabs and, uh, and, and maybe encouraging, you know, and, and trying to grow venues is probably the way to, to go. I haven't actually thought about it. So yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But hopefully that is soon. Hopefully that date is soon because this, this, this lockdown or this prohibition is, Shit. um, it's just nonsense now, and uh, and I think everyone bought into it for the first three weeks, or most people bought into it for the first three weeks. But the longer it goes on, uh, um, you know, we're just destroying more lives than 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 they were ever going to save. So so it's not absolutely agree. Not good. In honor of lockdown. <laughs> it just fell off the back of a truck somewhere. You know I mean? <laughs> Where's the label? <laughs> uh, Cheers. It, it, it came off in the fridge. Oh, this braggart's tasting good, Trevor. As it warms up, it's got like, um, it's way more complex. The honey comes through a lot more and uh, I'm really enjoying it, yeah. It's I think you need it about kind of 14 just, degrees. Yeah, it's you probably about that it. now. Yeah, I, I see that Steph was also involved in this. He didn't make it to the brew day, but I think he did a lot of work um, with the recipe. And uh, Tatenda was, Tatenda was your brewer at the time. And uh, yeah. I know he was heavily involved as well. I missed the Yeah, very, mu very much so. Very I, can't much believe, so. I can't believe you sacked him. <laughs> Not a guy I would uh, the brewers, The brewers that I've trained. <laughs> oh, you've trained him. <laughs> Where is he now? Is it uh, Mad Giant, eh? That's right. So he, um, 
the, the gentle giant of bread. It's a tender, Kivaura. It's, it's such a nice guy. So he, he moved uh, to Red Rock and then on to Mad Giant, uh, where they're doing lovely things. So uh, they, they've all gone from that tiny little country brewery into bigger and better things. Brahm, uh, Brahm is uh, now brewing in uh, Hey Joe. Uh, yep. To tenders there at, uh, at, uh, at Mad Giant. Hey, hey! Just waiting for your mic to connect, Andre. It's, uh, it's just connecting to audio, but we can't hear you right now. <clears throat> I know Wait, Andre, can't hear you. <laughs> you look gorgeous. Have you just showered? <laughs> Had a bath in soup. You've got that, just, that freshly showered look, Andre. Here we go. Here you, now we can hear you. Me. Welcome. We can hear you. No, we can't. No, nope, we could. The technical support is coming to fix it. Why can't we hear him? <laughs> I don't know. It could for a second, and then he kind of muted himself again. Why can't we hear yeah. Andre? His, his, his mic is connected, but uh, it get some young brains in here to fix it. <laughs> So, so Dave, throughout your lockdown, you were, I mean, booze was completely freely available. There was no restriction oh, at all, except for, yeah. except for pubs, pub shutdown. Pub shutdown, uh, that's the problem. People can't go and obviously socialise. Um, and it makes you wonder how many will be able to reopen. I suppose Because a lot of them must have been... Yeah, I mean, a lot of, I mean, a, a, a lot of them must have, be te must, must have been teetering on the brink in any case. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it'd be terrible if all those pubs turned back into churches. <clears throat> well, I mean, I've got a history of being in pubs since I was about five years old with my grandparents. Do you have a headset, in Andre? Huddersfield. Um, and the, it was the life of British people going to the pub in the uh, 50s, 60s, even well into the 70s. And <clears throat> it's, still a, it's still a thing for the community in small villages that meet in the pub. So, you know, it just makes you wonder how many is going to reopen. Uh, but yeah. actually buying alcohol hasn't been a problem. You can buy it in any supermarket. There's never been any restriction. And I don't think, well, certainly where I live in this part of the world, South Yorkshire, there's been no problem whatsoever in buying alcohol, wine, beer, spirits, whatever you want. Um, it's not been a strip the shelves of, well, certain uh, places have stripped the shelves of lagers early on, but I've never had a problem when I've gone in seeing stuff. I mean, I don't buy beer because I've got, I always keep at least 200 bottles in my own stocks. So, but occasionally I buy the odd uh, craft beer and you can, you can just go now and just help yourself, you know, and you can still get stuff online. Although again, like the, uh, getting the grain and the home brewing uh, supplies, there's a little bit of a problem with the post. You might have to wait a few extra days. But yeah, yeah there's been well, no what's, what's the, And what's the situation with the so-called free houses? I mean, are they still, are they still or have they all been taken up by, the majority have been, of pubs been taken up by the big, uh, what's it, Witherspoons or whatever? Witherspoons is a big thing. Uh, but but the are there still some free houses? Uh, there is quite a few free houses. There's a lot of, over the past few years, certainly around this area, and I think a lot of others, if not all, there's been a lot of small pubs opening up. Uh, not just pubs that brew their own beer underneath the, uh, in the cellar, just small, like uh, where my mother lives a few miles away, there's two local places, just like 50 yards, that all they sell is local craft beer. They don't brew it on the premises, but you can go in. You can't buy a, a, a meal or anything, but you can drink good quality beer, and people seem to like that. Uh, and these yeah. little small small pubs, if you like, are cropping up these craft breweries. Now, some, as I say, do brew under the floor. Uh, others just bring it in. Uh, but there's been a, a lot of uh, a lot of places opening recently, but it's a case of how many will open when it's the lockdown's finished. That's the problem. We don't know. 
Um, so Cheshire, Cheshire Homebrew is saying to us that uh, a lot of these pubs are, are they they buy their they, they buy their beer from the from the supermarkets as opposed to the uh, the, 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 the the brewers themselves. That that's weird. Yeah, some of them will do. Uh, they'll they'll buy obviously they'll buy cans and stuff. Uh, there's a, there's quite a few uh, shops that open that sell specialist cans. There's one I go to to get me Vedant cans uh, from. We're in Cornwall, Falmouth, and they they stock all local craft uh, brewery cans. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that these places do buy uh, from supermarkets and stuff. But I remember when I was buy, there. The... They, they also buy, but you know, casks from craft breweries as well. But the, you can um, see them piled outside. Those beers in the in the supermarkets are ridiculously cheap as well. I don't think the brewers yeah. get. I don't think the brewers get very much money from. Uh, from supermarkets at all from uh, they just sell volume it's on a volume thing you can go to the aldi or uh, lidl uh, the budget supermarkets which are very 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 popular here and you can get so-called craft beer for one pound 25 a can up to 150 a can and i've tried it some of it will probably be extract or organic sort of additives to it rather than hops but it's palatable and it's drinkable and people are buying it. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, well, I, mean, I'd, I bought a lot of beers from the supermarkets when we were in the UK. Now I tried like most of them from the different, uh, uh, from the different stores and uh, you know, they're all like stupidly cheap, but, but I don't think I didn't, I didn't have an amazing one. You know, I had good beers, but I didn't mm -hmm. have any like stand to get the standard ones. You need to, you need to buy from, the breweries themselves or from the um specialist from shops the, from the specialist like bottle shops or yeah yeah whether we call them yeah definitely we don't have that thing in this country so much because you can't buy beer in a supermarket you can only buy it from a separate uh bottle store so a lot of the supermarkets have their own bottle stores but um there's not much choice in terms of craft beer here in uh um in those uh you know, versions of the, um, mm -hmm. like, was it like Checkers Liquor or whatever they're called and, and all those ones. Yeah, uh, we, we can get Andre back in. Ah, oh, here he comes up. Uh, Andre? Talk, Andre. Uh, How's it? Yeah, Sorry, yeah. I'm not free. Uh, he's not hey! Free. Yeah. <laughs> where, where, the fuck did you, where the fuck did you get your education from, boy? Ah, uh, yeah, exactly. What education? Oh, we've got some old school boys here, eh? I forgot about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Some sticky bums in the house. <laughs> Hello, Dave. Hello, Mike. Hello, Trevor. Hi, Thanks Andre. for joining us. How are you, Andre, you old salt? How are you, my friend? Yeah, mucha. Tired. Long, long week, but nice to nice to have an excuse to get out early and leave the boys brewing soup. It's making soup businesses harder than making beer, apparently. So talk uh, us through it, Andre. Okay, so we use, at the moment we're only using our mash tun. We mashed in cold one day and broke the motor in the gearbox. Oh wow! Um, what from all the from all the um, the the vegetables wait, in there? All, yeah, yeah, almost two tons of vegetables on a mash rake that usually takes about four hundred kilos of grain. But they mashed wow. it in. So that's that's what happens when young brewers do their own thing. <laughs> so that was an expensive mistake. When we got to the end of the brew and it was sounding terrible, sent it in for repairs beyond economic repairs. So we've got a new one. But basically what we do is we it takes quite a long time. So we, we used to we have a commercial mincer, a mince, basically like a meat mincer, but we put all the vegetables through. Um, but it's too slow. So the prep work in uh, means cleaning 10% onions, 30% butternut, and 10% onions, 10% carrots, 20% butternut, 60% potatoes. Um, are you, what are potatoes, you dry hopping with, uh, turnips? Um, we, yeah, we just dry, dry no. Yeah, we, we're mixing with uh, the, the rake and then we just uh, throw a little bit of salt, a little bit of, little bit of uh, 
cumin usually, um, cook, boil it for 45 minutes, and then the delivery through the pump on max just smashes it to 45 minutes to an hour. So we, we mash in at about 95 and then just keep it going. And the temperature drops down to about 72, 70 ish. You, but you need to be careful because your veg, vegetables break down, start breaking down nicely at about up, upwards of 76 degrees. Okay. Uh, so we brew 3,000 liters at a time in our 2,000 liter system. But as long as you mash in warm, the veg starts breaking down um, into a slurry, slurry liquid. And then we keep the, the and it's, it's quite, Nick Bushes, for example, he, he, he's got a, a mash tun kettle. Yeah. Um, and his mash tun kettle He's obviously got the surface area to volume ratio of a kettle. So yeah. it heats up quicker. Um, this, but we've got a gas kettle. As well. can, so no, no, no. It steams Electric really effectively. Steam. This year. Right. And, and, and what makes it so much better is I've, I'm getting my light petroleum oil at, or light fuel oil, 4 and 33 a liter now with a drop in the oil price. Oh plus wow! The sub, plus the subsidy um, given to us by our um, by our. I'm just going to go and see if I can get myself a beer. Sorry. <laughs> just, 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 before you go, drink. like this, Andre, well, like how this. Do, how do you? How does he get three? How does he get three thousand liters out of two thousand liter uh, 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 hot system? Double brew I don't days, understand I that. Double, double brew days. Double brew days, eh? Yeah, I think it's great. Be, what he's be. doing. Yeah, I think it's double. I think it's, uh, both I mean, these bottles I've got today are, are wax sealed. It's so annoying, eh? <laughs> yeah. How's the? How's this? How's this beer? But how amazing that 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 that, that this uh, I mean it's been quite a, a evolution of, of processes that uh, Andre has done there, and and that um, you know, many other people are now doing as well. And and there's obviously been a little bit of a learning curve that he's that he's managing to 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 share with with others. I'm, I'm just so interested in how he distributes it and how he because you got you got to there's all sorts of health and safety about what temperature you you transport to that etc cetera, etc cetera. so he I'm, I'm interested to talk to him i don't know why he's scarpered well he wants a beer he's been making soup all day yeah my daughter does the same <laughs> oh in india in india huh? yeah yeah my daughter lives in mumbai india uh she has done for five or six years now and each building because they're in total lockdown can't get anything they have to have the food delivered to the uh security guards at the gate but every day she makes rotis which is for anybody who doesn't know are indian flatbreads yeah, um, rotis are quite popular here yeah, yeah and yeah. Uh, other people in her building in other apartments they might make dal whatever and she obviously has to cover herself up and her mouth with a mask she goes to the security gate every day with about i don't know how many rotis but it's a big pile leaves them there and then a, a van picks them up and takes them to distribution centres where the poor, and there is a lot of poor in India, just like South Africa, um, daily workers who can't get a wage. And they come then and they line up. In fact, I think I sent you photographs uh, yeah. two weeks ago. And she does it every day. Uh, she's, a, you know, she's really into it big time. She won't see people starve. And she's doing a bit, you know. Like um, maybe not as big as uh, Andre because he's got a bigger thing, and I, I take my hat off to him if he was here. <laughs> yeah, I think so, doing so the, 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 Bruce, the soup Bruce is doing it as well, isn't it? A lot Bruce of breweries is, are doing it. Uh, Nick is Fraser's. Yeah. Neil Cook. Neil Cook is doing Richmond it. Hill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think they're fantastic what they're doing for the people. They really are yeah. fantastic. Absolutely. You cannot see people starve. I think that uh, sums that's, up that's the... the lowest thing of the low. You cannot see people starve. You've got to look after them. I think it sums up the craft brewing scene here. Uh, that the, 
the fact that 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 they have like stepped up to uh, to turn their breweries into into kitchens like that. No, is, I think I think yeah. they're wonderful people for doing that. Absolutely wonderful. You know, uh, so there's there's quite a trick about coordinating your efforts with the the kind of local structures that are already in. Andre, that looks like a cup of coffee cup, more than a cup of beer. A cup beer. of char. A cup of char. Juice, man. I've been naughty, <laughs> so my wife took my beer out the fridge. Yeah. Andre, tell us before know. you talk about soup. Just tell us a little bit about this uh, about this beer that I'm drinking now. This uh, Ooh, it's delicious. Yeah, because uh, uh, Michael Michael also man. says it's one of one of his favorites. Go for it. <laughs> Thank you. So Sugar Man um, was a, a beer that we, it was, the it was the first beer we brewed in our brewery in a little 30 liter system that... Um, what a wonderful TV manner, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> You there? I'm gonna run out of battery. Uh, hang on. Okay. Tell I'll, us. Um, hang, on, <laughs> hang on. Just give me two seconds. Just one second. Take us with you Sorry. into the lavatory. <laughs> <laughs> I see some castle in the background there, Andre. The story of my life. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um. Okay. So Sugar Man was the first beer that we brewed in our brewery. Sorry, Dave, at least Mike and Trevor know how disorganized I am when I try and cook 6,400 liters of soup in a day. Oh, I think you're amazing. A it's hero, amazing, Andre, mate. and congratulations. You're a hero to me. Thank you. Well, we've got, we've, got, we've got good news for the breweries. So we've got a way, and we've got government that's now keen as customers. So I mean, it's quite straightforward. And the money that they're talking, we come in much lower than the com than the competitors, the or not the competitors, but the food providers. Yeah. So our recipe, when we buy bulk, um, when we buy in bulk, where do you buy from, Andre? I buy from the Epping Market. So my last trades at the at the Epping Market cost me two rand forty for good quality baby potatoes that require very little cleaning. Um, good quality carrots that only require topping and good quality onions and relatively good quality butternut. But when I say good quality, they're, they're all, we're all getting in like within 20% of the, of the lowest prices of them. We, we explain that to around 40? How did, is that per, per what? Per kilo. Per kilo. I, wow. I, I, I sort of work it on a per kilo basis. So two rand forty. So if we if we sort of work that out, you've got an average of so yeah, you know, weighted average, ten percent. My onions are three rand, ten percent onions, twenty percent butternut, three rand seventy one. Sorry, thirty percent butternut, three rand, twenty percent butternut, three rand seventy one. Carrots four rand, ten percent. Potatoes two rand forty. 1,000 liters is a ratio of, sorry, 2,000 liters is 1,200 veg, 800 water, which gives you a nice thick soup. And then we, we load it quite lightly with, with salt um, because of diabetics and infants. Um, and we've got a dietitian working on it. And then the, the really nice one Trevor, nice shirt, Dave. Um, I'm glad you noticed, Andre. I've changed yeah, it halfway that. through. <laughs> Perfect. And then, um, yeah, and so we, where was I? Oh, so we're in the process of doing the test and calculations and calorific calculations of um, textured vegetable product, TVP, textured vegetable something, which is basically vegetable soya and other puree. stuff. Puree. 
but it, but it makes it chunky and and actually it gives a little bit of texture and taste. Um, but it also gives the balanced diet. Trevor would know that you can't just live on potatoes, but you can live a lot longer if there's oil, if there's vegetable yeah. oil and um, and protein in. So we're trying to get utilize the in, the distribution infrastructure that we've made to deliver a very low cost, warm, balanced, clean meal that has no secondary value mark, no no secondary value, secondary market value. The yeah. problem with with food packet, food parcel distribution is they get stolen and sold and or the, <clears throat> the drug takers don't give it to their children. You know, they sell it and take drugs. Whereas soup, you, you want it if you're hungry and you don't need it if you're not hungry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now you well, try and make a delicious soup, add oil to it to get the minimum RDA or already whatever it is. A fat. Daily allowance. Yeah. Recommended daily allowance, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the same for, for protein and soy. So what protein are you adding as a soy? Food. Is it soy? Yeah, soy. Mm. Uh, we're, gonna, we're looking at lentils and split peas and things like that. One thousand liter flow bins. Um, That's those things that all the Cape Townians bought when there was a water shortage a few years back. Yes, okay. exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's been quite hard to get hold of them, but we've got, you know, obviously we we're going along at quite a pace now, um, and are we we doing. Between us and Drifter, if Drifter does two batches and we do one, that's two, four plus three, 5,400. If we do two batches, we didn't distribute the second batch because we're moving into phase two. Phase two is going to be two batches and maybe two batches on our, on our adjunct mash. We've also got an adjunct mash that will give us a nice quick cook. Um, okay. but we may actually choose to cook something else in there and back blend or something like that because it'll give a nice hot boil with a vigorous stir. It's an 800 liter tank that we can sweat to about 1100 liters. Um, and then Jan, your cigarettes are here. Sorry, I've they, just, are they illegal? I'm a big beggar and a friend of mine. <laughs> Been bootlegging things. Jan, come and get your cigarette. Pal, that's you only really lied to 20. Don't worry. You only lied Andre, to 22 saps, people. So, Andre, can so, I just ask you, how did you, how did you, so, so I, I obviously, I, I mean, I went to my little village and I said, uh, we're very happy to start making soup. And they said, no, we've got our own infrastructure. We, we, we've aligned with the Red Cross and we've integrated with. So, my question to you is, how did you integrate? Because there are obviously a lot of politics around the established infrastructure of uh, feeding schemes. How did you get well, involved there? Because nobody making really this lucky stuff. Because no I person. got introduced to the mayor. Um, Who's our mayor again? Dan Plato. Okay. Young. Yeah. yeah, come in. I know Please you want young. a cigarette. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. So I met D D Dan Plato, and when he got the idea, he, um, he, he was able to... But it was your idea. You came up with the idea. Well, yeah, it was my idea, but, but he knew about it. And when a, a, a competitor, oh. a friend of mine actually tried to hijack our system uh, and he came nice in friends. and cucked on all of her. Huh? Nice friend, ex-friend. Yeah, ex-friend. <laughs> but, but anyway... Oh, he <laughs> Can you say cock here, yeah, Mike? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, we can, we can get away there. Mark says, Mark Fury, Andre says, congratulations to you guys, amazing work. Um, and then he wants to keep these shows to keep be keep hosted, but he's got to go. Have a great weekend. Greek. So, sorry, so, 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 so you, 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 sorry, you had mayoral, <laughs> you had mayoral no, buy who he was. Sorry, I, I know I'm disjointed and all over the place. Um, <clears throat> so, so 
how I did it, Trev, was make make it through to the make make it through to the um, the mayor, and when he got the idea of it, he was like, "Holy shit, these guys can make ten thousand liters a day easily." Yeah, ten thousand liters a day of nutritious soup, thirty thousand meals. He thinks he can do his two other tanks. Um, that you know, we could we could quite easily with with three shifts. If we mash in at six, with three, if we did three shifts, that would that would obviously mean night work. We could probably do twenty two thousand liters if we could get the prep work done. Now twenty two thousand liters, sixty six thousand portions. Add bread wow. to that. So each portion is three hundred mils, in other words. With two slices of bread, 300 mils, mm. 10, I think 10 or 15 milliliters of oil, and, and I think 25 gram, and, no, a little bit less, but I forget the ratios. 25 kilos per thousand. So it's about eight grams of protein, but it, but it works out as an effective balanced diet. If that's the only meal a person will be getting the whole day, it'll push back starvation or hunger and starvation. Yeah. And it'll delay the, you know, the, into the last of their fatty deposits and things like that. So we can do that. Your, uh, your, so, your, this is so important what he's telling us uh, about, you know, it's so, so fascinating. So it's a pretty, so but his technology is so shit. I think he's so Yeah. He's I really think he's doing I think he's absolutely fantastic what he's doing. I really do. I, I so mean, I what to... more can you do in your life than help to feed people who, you know, are starving, basically? I also wanted to find out about, uh, like, the longevity of this and... Uh, um... Yeah. And what, yeah. like, what's happening with the current political situation and where they're trying to, where it seems like the government are trying to shut these uh, NGOs down from feeding starving people for, for, I can't see any reason behind it, uh, why you'd want to do that, why, why that would be a case. But uh, I see this week that the DA petitioned against that. I don't know what happened as a result of it. but that, That's what I'd like to ask him. I mean, there's so much politics yeah. around the, the kind of making of it, the distribution of it and... And, you know, there's so many egos in this charity stuff. But so, uh, there, there's so many interesting things I want to ask him. Yeah. Hopefully we can get him back just now. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's, 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 just, it's, just, it's just also once you commit to that, you know, how do you, how do you decommit? I mean, when this is all over, how does Andre convert it from a soup kitchen back to a brewery? That's a... Well, 100%. Be another... Because well, like, when, we, when we allow alcohol sales again, Surely there's still going to be thousands, millions of people not able to work and uh, and put food on the table. So, you know, do you do you then uh, like yeah, exactly? How do you how do you you're right? How do you get that back? Hello, you're back. Andrew, we missed all of that. We're asking you so many questions without you being here. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry. Okay. sorry, I've got shitty internet at home. Um, you guys have been so patient. Next round of beers is on me. Um, your round. This is your round here. <laughs> so, so where was I? Okay, so balanced meal. So you put in a lot of effort to put, put all these infrastructure in, the infrastructure in place. So now what we've done is change it from a vegetable soup to a balanced meal with the oil and the and the and the fats. Um, oh, you know where we were? We were talking about how did we get the legislation through? Is that right? Yeah. 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 So I managed to talk to Dan Plato at the same time as this friend of mine tried to get us reported because we didn't have a soup production kitchen. We've got a, we had a certificate of acceptability for, um, for food upstairs and beer downstairs in the brewery. And they yeah. said, well, they said, well, you need to apply for a new one. Unfortunately, the health inspector had worked with the head, with our head chef and had worked with me before. So he came in and said, listen, this place has already got it. They've made yeah. me give you another one. Fill this in and off you go. And then he did that. And then we got reported again. And the mayor actually, I believe, just sent it straight back and said, 
actually tell them to fuck off. I want this to work. Yeah. So, <laughs> this, is Plato, this is Plato, the philosopher. Yeah. So, it's, but you yeah, also so, have so to Dan remember that, that that beer hygiene is surely like exactly. way superior to food hygiene in in any exactly. production environment because yeah. So, so the fact that we need to keep beer between in that danger zone between seven degrees centigrade and sixty three degrees centigrade for a whole month, and if it if you don't, you've got beer spoilage. You've got to throw the whole batch. So that's exactly. That's the hygiene in our processes. Yeah. And frankly, so are you storing bottle? Are you storing soup in your fermenters? Then is that is that are they, are they no, being used? No, 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 no. Okay, uh, so it's fresh it batches out, out every day. Those are hot. Goes out hot. Remember, the soup kitchens actually are relatively under-equipped. Most of them, most of them are okay. But I've delivered personally in dangerous areas that are, they don't have fucking anything. Z Z Ro. and until now they've they've managed to eke out an existence. But you know, you, you can arrive there, and it'll take an hour for them to get enough containers together to take delivery of their 500 liters of soup allocation or whatever. We're trying to improve this and we're reaching out to the communities and the neighborhood watches to bring two, two liter ice creams. And every time someone goes out there, we send out, you know, whatever it is, 50 liters worth of containers. And the next time they get it, it will be better. Um, but really what we had to do was fast track, low cost, no secondary value, nutritious, clean food. That was it. Yeah. So, so one of the questions we asked where your, where your internet was bombing and out. Have you got a price on what? Was, um, hang on, Trevor. Uh, was, was how, do you, how do you continue this? Uh, like when you, are, when you are allowed to sell alcohol and make alcohol again, there's obviously going to be a huge population of the, of the country that are still mm -hmm. without work and without money and without food and, 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 and et cetera. So, you know, you, you're going to go back to what you guys do best, I assume, and that's make beer, right? Well, man, here, here what, what I think we need to understand is that with all the, ta with, with the bars closed, our, our volume is probably 75, 80% kegs. Yep. You know, we've got our canning line and we've got the new branding, but 80% of our volume is still kegs. And until we get to level one, all restaurants are closed anyway. Even when we get to level one, probably 50% of those are gone. Yep. You know, I don't want to be pessimistic, but no, no. the reality is that so I also have a restaurant, but I was such a bad restaurateur. The, this shutdown actually is more, makes me makes me better off because now UIF is paying my staff rather than me losing money. Yeah. So it, but, but, you know, the, my, my, my customers you know, are mostly restaurants that take, take beer and kegs. So yeah. let's assume that 20%, you know, goes up by, by even triples. We still only need to be at 60% of production. And if I have a look at our volumes, we could brew probably twice a week or, or a double batch once a week. Or and you could do the soup in, in, one day in between this. And do the soup, double batches. <clears throat> what we've tried to do is come up with a very low cost, healthy, hygienic food solution that where um, companies, governments, cities, individuals, anyone that wants to sponsor a community can realistically do so at probably under 10 rand a liter. So now you've got three meals going out. Well, three rand, really three rand a meal. That's good. Three rand a meal, yeah. Plus two slices of bread. So you've got uh, yeah. so, so, three rand, so, four rand a meal. Yeah, three rand, 60 that's 15, a meal. That's 15 pence, David, yeah? Yeah, I mean, at the moment, the, the rate is uh, around 22 rand to the pound. 
Yep. So yeah. three three round work yeah. it out. I mean it's not a lot is it? It's, balanced, it's very good. Yeah, it's not a lot. A balanced meal for fifteen cents. Yeah. yeah. Fifteen uh, pence. Uh, and, 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 and sorry, what I haven't what I didn't tell you there is that price contemplates a little bit of profit for the brewery. Mm. Profit. Not to profit, but you can pay you can pay wages out of it. You mean you have your electricity and your yeah. You can pay you can pay electricity. You can pay it pays the water. Mm. I love that's in there, but this is about trying. It's coming back. Sounds like it's coming back. <laughs> I reckon he's going to have a little transition Make period from a lot of easing, easing going on. Can you hear? Me? Uh, yeah, you're just breaking, but it's coming back slightly. Okay, Mike. I wonder. Let me let me kill your um, video. Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear us, Andre? No, he's disappeared here. Yeah. I'm gonna try and stop his video. Uh, here we go. Try see if we can hear you now, Andre. I've, I've just killed you. Okay, you're back. I've you're got back. you again. Okay. <laughs> but so, so this is important for other brewers that are listening, and for yeah. you, Mike, and and actually everyone. It's quite a straightforward process. What I've tried to do for the Cape breweries is try and get a, a simpler system to avoid the difficulties in the market. So what I already do for two or three breweries is I just take the funding that we get and Nick gets his vegetables and I just give him vegetables. Um, this is Nick so from Drifter, to be clear. Yeah, so you've got yeah. Drifter, Fraser, Stelly's, Richmond Hill, yeah. there's a, there's a, is, that, is, that the, is that currently the, the guys that are on board? Is that right? Mike, I don't know. I really, honestly, I work all the hours God sends, and then I, I have a beer and I hit the pillow. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's from what my I. Day, from... You know, my day starts at at four a.m. twice a week when I go to the market and buy fourteen tons of vegetables, and often it carries on until like midnight or one. But anyway, now we're getting shifts working. Yep. I've got a, by Monday, we're going to have a brewer on each shift. I'm decreasing the shift length to six hours because physically moving close to Hard four work. tons of vegetables a day and, and shredding. And, and shredding four tons of vegetables is, is um, physically quite, quite taxing. So, so we try, I'm trying to get, so I've got some volunteers in uh, that are going to go on to a uh, non-qualifying barman. I don't know if anyone has met Moses at, um, from um, the observatory shop. Very nice chap, but he, he doesn't qualify for UIF. And another barman that was a temp. temp. But they're both strong chaps and quick learners and whatever. So for these guys, at the moment, they haven't, our fund doesn't have um, a mandate to pay minimum wage. It all contemplates volunteers. So at the moment, I've got about seven or eight UIF uh, or, 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 or minimum wage qualifying staff. Yep. Um, but if I can get six brewers on one shift, six brewers on another, then it's easy enough to do Half the guys are volunteers, so it's not that expensive. Two thirds of my vegetable prep people are volunteers. And then a third that are helpers and cleaners and security during the day and whatever. You pay them what you can, you give them a few slices of bread and a cup of soup and everyone's happy. Yeah. So, so also without, um... Without getting like political, uh, I don't want to like turn it into a political debate. 
but um, mm. but we've seen like this week uh, the DA has filed papers against uh, the government for trying to stop efforts such as yourselves and and trying to make um, successfully. And, sorry. So the minute I'm actually. Mr. Our, our local minister um, for social development was the yep. one that, that that also did that okay. successfully, and that was a okay, fantastic. A, so I didn't, I didn't fortunate. hear the outcome. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's um, it was blocked. Um, so fantastic. We, so we, you know, she succeeded there. But um, I, I've personally <clears throat> done some deliveries, and it it's gotten very hectic very quickly and a tsunami is coming a flipping mm. tsunami is coming it's going to get hectic if we don't in what way Andre, what do you mean by that but hunger trevor hunger fuck people are going to be hungrier you know mm -hmm. they've got nothing you know we had unemployment of 20 29 percent it's it's over 50 percent i mean think about you guys are working and whatever but the backbone of the economy normal people yep you know I found mm. that companies that I used to use for stuff, a few places of you, you can't you can't get certain things. So um, we spoke before you joined about Walt Smoltz closing this week, and I mean that's just one story out of out of thousands of stories of businesses closing, right? And I mean, you know, they, like when you talk about for good. Uh, apparently, yeah, from what I yeah, but I yep. mean, and when you when you talk about businesses closing and you talk about the economy, like. You know, you hear you hear discussions about economy and the dirty words of economy, but we're not talking about economy. You're talking about like like you say the survival. people you're going to that that exactly survival. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not money. It's 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 food, right? I mean that's the oh. yeah yeah. So so so, so yeah. I what mean, you're doing is fantastic, but yeah, but, 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 I don't know how. but importantly, this is one of the things that we've managed to do is every time we get a little bit of exposure so the spokespeople myself occasionally car and dion bing um there's quite a lot of and and i've probably done 10 in you know tv interviews a few radio interviews and things the thing to do is to try and push hope out there and try and encourage in whatever way you can to keep people doing what they're doing supply chains doing what they're doing Take yep. away this notion of profit. Introduce at an acceptable level survival, right? And, you know, I do it with my staff. Um, you, you can see a guy where you've, you know, the guy's like, but the one thing, when people are on UIF minimum wage, just don't push them too hard because they get pissed off. They break. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. Andrew, I think you need to have a, like a no, little transition uh, patch from. You there, Andre? He needs to buy an internet, that guy. Go fund an internet for him. <laughs> Can we buy you an internet, Andre Fulion? But I mean, it's a it's an amazing discussion. It's it's uh, because because he's, he's he's not letting us into the, the the enormous ridiculous politics that must be happening in the background with with uh, you know with kind of NGO mm -hmm. a feeling threatened that there's this new kid on the block that's doing things cheaper and more efficiently and and you know so there, there's there's going to be a mountain of shit that he's that he's not talking to us about that that. Um, that he's navigated very successfully. It's amazing what he's done. No, definitely, one hundred percent. It's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, I, yeah. Uh, he it's needs hard to transition. To in, he needs to go from soup, a little brief patch of crystal meth, just to get the bank balance looking better, and then back to beer, Mike. <laughs> Breaking bad style. <laughs> Breaking bad soup. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it's absolutely amazing what he's done, and he and he's yeah. and and the fact that other people are rubber stamping it. Uh, so, so just in my tiny little village, I tried to roll something like that out, and I was told no. There's in existing things, and they don't, they don't want me to do it. They've got the existing soup kitchens. So, so, so what he's done is is, is absolutely amazing.
Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I don't think we're in a position to have existing, th- I mean, you know, the government has food parcels, they're not working, you know, like, like there's existing NGOs in place, they can't, there's too many people. So, like, there's too many people that in, are in need of this, that, that we can't, you can't forget, um, like, you can't write off other ideas because there's something else in place, you know, we just, we yeah. need, we need, as, I think people need as much as they can be given. And uh, just while, while Andre's not there, the, I've got a, um, a link to the, where anybody that, you know, is fortunate, like, like ourselves, Trevor, where we have a paid position that carries on regardless of this. Um, if you have anything to spare, uh, there's a donation link to, to Woodstock's. Um, uh, Andre just apologized to me on the, on the WhatsApp, just saying, sorry, you know, his, his internet is obviously shy. Okay. No, no, it's cool. Um, <laughs> Together with Stelly's and RHBC and Drifters links to fund to 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 offer donations for them. So yeah, if um you know if you have some expert and I don't think like you know we're not talking about a lot of money, but uh, but anything you can donate is. Oh, I wish uh, they would. I wish they would go a long a, way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish they'd set up a joint fund where you could, but but you know that's the thing with the all these charitable things. It just needs admin, which cost uh, costs. Uh, Mm-hmm. You know, quite a lot as well. It'd be nice if there was a central fund that fed off to Port Elizabeth, uh, to Woodstock, uh, and to to uh, Drifter, and yeah. to Stellenbosch for 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 them as well. Because yeah, but I think like if you know, like if you have a if you have a favorite brewery out of those ones, if you choose that one, I think it's all it's all going to the same cause, which is feeding people, right? Yeah. So there's not there's not a a better one to uh, to, oh. to 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 pick pick and choose from there. So. Yeah, I think um, I think Andre, we have we have lost him, but that was a great insight into um, into what they're doing. And uh, next week um, we're going to have some other superheroes on the show from um, uh, Stelly's and um, uh, hopefully Fraser's and maybe um, uh, Richmond Hill or or uh, you're back. Okay, you know what? I'm such an idiot. I was actually. I'm right next to the main internet tron, uh, Wi-Fi transmitter, but our house is quite big, so I've got two other ones. And I was doing connected. The, it's connected <laughs> to the furthest <laughs> one away. It actually looks so much better now. We can see you and everything. Okay, so it's not that bad. I was wondering, my poor children, how they how they possibly did all their homeschooling. But anyway, okay. <laughs> we're going to go fund uh, internet connection for you. We decided. No, 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 no. It's perfect. It's, <laughs> no worries. Don't so worry. So, Andre, how's your? How, how, I mean, you've managed to navigate through the politics of this thing, which must be enormous, very Man, successfully. Yeah, we were lucky because we got that meeting with Dan. I've had two. Pretend, well, I've I've had two attempts to sidetrack it and usurp it and steal my ability to whatever and and I think it was it's it's one one of them was popularity driven or or wanting the the attention and the other one was quite quite hectic because you know you can't you can't at a time like this try and derail a big machine that has the ability to get I mean brewers when they get going as a community they show how things can be done. And I mean, if you think SAB, if you think of SAB, I'm trying through John Rosevear to encourage. So who's Africa. that? John Rosevear was the cleverest and nicest oak in our year. He was the smartest white blazer dude, but he was good, really nice chap. But he was a, he's a chemical engineer and he was a I think board level at South African breweries. Um, quite recently with, with the exodus of the senior people after the purchase by ABI, I think he left or was let go. I don't know what the deal was, but I haven't, I haven't chatted to him for a few years. And I took a package. Huh? <laughs> or took a package. They, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, Rosie, I, I've been in touch with him. And for example, just as, a, as an example, in, in other parts of the world, they use brew houses quite successfully to do a vitamin enriched barley drink, malt drink. And the brew house makes it easily. You don't have to ferment it. Process is clean. Add a few <clears throat> permitted vitamins, vitamin, and, and, and off you go. Whether it's 
plastic bottle or a Tetra pack or whatever. But the point is there's a lot of nourishment and calories in this. Now, just as an idea, if you used our infrastructure that delivers all these quarts of beers to taverns, taverns, you know, they have to be pretty robust people running them and, 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 and safe storage zones. And if you had SAB that took money from the Belgian government and, and was distributing subsidized malt beverages through their delivery channels that were sold, but at a discount, right? So you're going to buy a two rand malt drink instead of a 20 rand quart. Kids drink it. It's part of their, their calor, you know, calorie intake. Yep. And, and the infrastructure stays in place and the, and the truck driver gets a little bit, not a lot. And, and the tavern owner gets 40 cents per box or carton or whatever it is sold. And you just sit and you just get what you can. You know, we, I mean, we were in a position where I didn't pay my salary in March and my wife's salary, my wife works for the business as well because we couldn't. Um, yeah. And I needed to keep money aside for excise and, you know. Um, and we didn't qualify for UIF because she's a foreigner and I didn't, you, it, it doesn't take too long to realize that can't pay school fees, can't fucking, there's so many things you can't do. Yeah. Everyone's in the same boat or, or 50% of the population is in the same boat. Yeah. You know, I had at least the contents of my restaurant that we, distributed and gave away but i had a you know i kept the fillet steak put it that way <laughs> uh, <laughs> that away well, not all of it um yeah but, you know but the thought is that um the deeper we get ourselves into this and the and the longer we keep just the more difficult the, I know, dog, the more difficult it will be for us to get out of it. And, and I've seen it. This bloody lockdown is ineffective. It is completely ineffective. Yeah, no, 100%. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's I completely think, uh, ineffective. You just need to go into the townships. So and I've been into the townships. It doesn't it's exist. Absolutely zero. Yeah, there's no lockdown. Yeah. yeah. Because you can't, because that's not, that's not saying they're not listening. It's because you cannot. It cannot happen, right? I mean, you cannot lock down well, an environment. It can't like happen, Mike. It can't happen realistically. Yep. But there's no attempt because it can't happen. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. So, why are we killing the economy as well? I mean, this yeah. is just. And I was like, just to interject, like, because I do dislike that word economy because it always sounds like. Because then you, because then you're talking about lives versus economy, and it's not. You're talking, your economy is is people's livelihoods, right? I mean, you're talking about yes. lives versus, you're talking about lives versus lives, you know. And that's that's the, if you, if there's a weighting of, I mean, Cyril said on 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 Thursday, he didn't say much, but what he did say on Thursday, just, was just that, a second, sorry, Mike, hang on, I'm just going to how's it? Okay, I'll carry on talking to myself here. <laughs> Hello, David. What, what are you what are you drinking? <laughs> Lost. I did. Uh, I did say in my introduction that this would be a pretty uh, tricky show to hold together, and uh, <laughs> pretty much proving right. Oh, Trevor's back. So, so as I say, Andre Cyril said in his um, in his speech on 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 Thursday that, uh, yeah. that they reckon, and I mean this is based on their estimates, but they reckon that they've saved eight hundred lives with this uh, with lockdown. Whether you believe hey. that number or not. You, how, how many how many lives have they ruined? You know that's that's how many no no no. They... There's already 800 dead people because of fights and 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 police brutality. That's a fucking that's a, fucking, uh, that's a Tuesday night from eight to ten in, uh, in 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 the townships in many places. Mm. But it's a clusterfuck. I mean, this is terrible. Yeah. Un fucking real to break the economy like this. You know, not to say that there's if you followed a policy of 
protecting the old and frail and sure. comorbid, comorbid. Have sure. that as a policy. Yep. And for the rest of us, fucking be careful. Be sensible, yeah. Be sensible. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and do your best and, and take your vitamin C and get your sleep and take zinc if you're not diabetic an or whatever it is. And, and, and exercise, <laughs> which we're also not allowed to fucking do, mm -hmm. except in the dark before, before, before it gets light. It's, and, and that's fucking dangerous. In Cape Town now, it's dark yep. until past seven o'clock. People are getting mugged. People are getting robbed at knife point for, yes. because because people are desperate. You know, you you're people getting like stories here in Broberg where the guys are getting robbed of their cell phones out on runs. But and and you can't blame people. You know, I mean, if you, if you've got to feed your kids, no. you've got to put food on the table. But, but let like, me give you perspective. And unfortunately, things have happened pretty much according to what I thought would flip and happen. Except we're not as sick. Whether it's because of the BCG or a less. No polluted or the fact that we all we're young you know, we're young and we've just finished summer those are the two things uh, the BCG. average age of this country is, sorry and bcg I, I don't believe that but i i believe we're young we're 27 years old that's our average age and we've just finished summer so we are going to have a, a little uh, clicking up of the curve but so what so what that's from a doctor there you go well, I'm not but a good doctor. But it's no, but it's not. It's not so what. It's 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 weighing up the it's weighing up the terrible situation with the with the less bad situation. No, you know, but, like but you, I mean, you have to, like it's it's not. You're not like it's hot. Yeah, it's very hard to talk about loss of lives because it's always going to be sens a sensitive issue. And uh, but you, if you're talking about a very small number versus a, a horrendously big number, then it's not hard to talk about. Really, you know, like it should, or it shouldn't be hard to talk about. You know, well, here's here's my view. Mm. it's going to get fucking out of control, completely out of control, because there what? isn't enough food. They're breaking the oh. supply chain by robbing the spaza shops, the supermarkets, and whatever. And who can blame them? But, but gang or mob violence is really dangerous. And you get a whole sure. bunch of people. Yeah. yeah. Where no, I was serving soup to is 10 kilometers from my house. It's a doddle. I know they're going to be at least somewhat weakened, but but yeah. those poor hungry people, <laughs> yeah. they'll be they'll be somewhat weakened. They may be quite tired when they get here, so it'll be a fair fight, me against ten of them. But but uh, it's it's, it's it's difficult. But it's I mean I, I don't really want to I didn't I didn't really want to turn this into a, a political debate. I mean, but obviously you know we are talking about we are talking about loss of we are talking about loss of but, uh, we're talking about you guys providing food to people that have have nothing and, well, and actually a, a, <laughs> we may we'll definitely make a difference there will be people living after this that otherwise wouldn't be living and that yeah. makes me feel proud for what we're doing but 100 uh, yeah what what i'd like to do is encourage other brewers with with particularly steam jacketed systems and, and insulated heating um, or relatively efficient heating processes to consider yep. doing this because little soup kitchens in the townships don't, you know, they don't have, it takes them five hours to heat up a 200 liter pot. You understand? Because of the heat loss. Yeah. We, we've got steam jackets yep. and and I've got 80 mil insulation and you, a little bit of steam, a couple of liters of light fuel oil and boom, you've got a soup on the boil, 2000 yeah. liters on the boil. And are you talking like, and, and I assume like on the bigger scale, like the size of your brewery, uh, it's more efficient. It's better. Like um, it's a better. I think the so, ideal sizes are one to 3000. Okay. It's, it's easier, the wash down is much easier than, than you know, a, we, we rinse and, you know, it's a much, it's, you um, don't have so a Andre, from sugar. Mm, yeah, Andre, yeah. Could I send my, could I send my bro maybe down to you to learn a few tricks? Yeah, please do. Could um, you, I mean, you, you are kind of now two weeks down the evolution of this process yeah. and you've learned a lot, it sounds like to me. Yeah, we've learned a lot. 
um, they, they're trying to um, commission Hermanus's brewery. Your brewery size, Trevor. It's too small. No. Very efficient, huh? You could chunk out three. How big? How, what's your batch size? 400 Thousand. liters. Right, and you're good for 400. You're good for 600 liters, two batches. Because you, you do a concentrate that you dilute down. Is that right? No, we mash in hot, just keep throwing vegetables and, and then until you the last 60 veg, 40 water gives you a nice thick soup. If it's a, if it's a thin soup and it splits, they, the, your customers get shirty. They, <laughs> yeah, they, one of them spat it out um, in our <laughs> second batch that we did and it, it, it split. But now we get a thick, it's like, well, obviously without the cream, but it's, it's like the consistency of, of Woolworth's butternut soup. It's thick. Um, yeah. And when you add the textured vegetable protein to that, it's a meal. It's, it's quite lacquer, you know? Does that help? And Does what, that what's the cumin? Why the cumin? You always, everyone seems to be stuck on this cumin thing. Simple. So a single spice is a cheap addition. Flavor, bit of flavor. Yeah, it's a, a single spice is a cheap addition. When you do... When you do mixed spices, it becomes expensive. And as much as it doesn't seem like it, when you're plowing through 10,000 liters a day or, or 7,000 liters a day, even your salt and your cumin become expensive. Um, but, it, yeah. you know... No, but it's, I mean, cumin's yeah. like a type of pepper, right? It's, a, it's, it's that kind of, like, seasoning that adds a yeah. nice bit of flavor, yeah. adds a bit of warmth, like... Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I sort of, yeah, I don't really. The, nice, the, nice other one, <laughs> the other one that we could do is cinnamon, but our, one of our chefs doesn't actually like cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a really, he's a hardworking chap. He's like, I don't, I don't even like this stuff. I'm saving the people. I'm saving the people. Um, no, that's, 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 that's great. Um, but, yeah. But, but really, hang on. Sorry. So, Sorry. So you should consider contacting and, and Mark from Hermanus has gotten the government as a customer that I believe may be interested in buying soup from him at 10 rand a litre. Out in Grayton, they'd have to pay your vegetable transport costs or you've got to We've find... Got vegetables there. We've got the vegetable farms there. Yeah. Find a recipe. And if they don't have onions, just get onions for flavour. Dawn the rest of the stuff in. You get a, so we shred it through a, a, a branch shredder. Uh, what do they call them? Remember that movie, um, Fargo? Yeah, I was going to ask like, you that. I remember it very well. That's what you yeah. call your wood chipper, don't you? That's what we call our wood chipper. And it's, it's so quick and effective. You sharpen the blades. Bear in mind for each batch, we've got to go through 1.8 tons needs to be shredded and I don't have a nice big, I'm not prepared to use my Kunzel four roller mill to do this. I'm not sure, I'm, I'm sure it wouldn't work anyway. But, but, but Fargo, my, my wood shredder has shred. Pumps it up. Yeah, it's brand new, gets cleaned out after every day. Um, and it's, and it, we keep the blades sharp and it just, Shreds it out, that with the heat, nice creamy soup, add your textured vegetable protein, add your oil. Actually, you should add a little bit more rather than less because it gives you nice calories. You know that, Trev. Calories and, and balanced diet, off you go. And you'll get, you'll get money for, from, from, from corporate sponsors. I, I would be happy to use the platform that we have as a clearinghouse to bring breweries on board. You know, you, if, you, if we've got, if, we, if I get a fund and people are throwing, okay, I want to do this and there's more brewing than I need and I, and I just say, hey, Trevor, put your hand up for 11 rand a litre soup or whatever it is, whatever the number is. Yeah. You just use this platform as a clearinghouse and go, this is Dave's mates. Yeah. He wants the money. 
sent to Trevor's brew house and Trevor's hungry customers sorted out. And then we just have but an I, account. But I think you I I think I think you're not over exaggerating when you say you have saved lives because because that's that is that is no, where no, it no, is. Fact. Because because a meal eaten is a meal banked. A meal not eaten is reserves eaten into. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. You know, the diet. Andre, starts- yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing what you've done. And it's, it's, uh, it's, not just, uh, it's not just the actual recipe development. It's the interpersonal and interpolitical things that you've done so well. That, that, uh, well, that's the challenging know. thing. Hey? I mean, anybody can create a soup recipe eventually, but, but to get that actually off the ground yeah. and, uh, and deal with that political shit that goes on behind the scenes that, that I can't even imagine how challenging that, yeah, that would have been. wonderful I embrace of quality that cuts through the shit. I don't know. Maybe that's I, a secret. Yeah, I had, I had a bad one yesterday. Uh, no, Monday. Fuck, time flies. Um, yeah, I had a bad meeting and I just left. I just said, fuck this. This is complete <laughs> shit. Yeah. And, uh, and I just, and that person is still trying to hijack it. We're trying to keep the element that is brewery stay as brewery because these these are the guys with the big pots these are also the guys that actually give a shit yeah that have infrastructure and you sit there and you go bugger it you know here we go um nick and the- from drifter for example because obviously they haven't been able to pay their rent i know the landlord and i think he may have been quite keen to kick nick out and then he looked and saw nick doing something lacquer now I think Mark from Hermanus has gotten an offer from the government that wants to put out that you know the local government wants to buy soup from him and get a regular supply. And he until he's up and going, he wants to buy from me. And I'm like, look, actually, I don't need the fucking money. Buy from Nick. He needs to pay his landlord. Yeah. I own yeah. my building. And actually, I'm I'm not the one that really needs it. I'll make the soup, pay a Nick. But it, yeah. you know, if you do it in a transparent manner, if you do it in a transparent manner, I all I need to do is make sure that the people that donate money to me, that their, that their money is used in the manner intended. So I go and buy massive, and I've got great relationships with the veg dealers. You know, have a look when you're next in, in pick and pay or Woolies or whatever. I saw butter, funny, we got a donation from, um, we got a donation of vegetables from some, Dear mommy, obviously, the shops at Woolies. And 40 rand a kilo for butternut, and and we're paying four rand a kilo after cleaning or four rand yeah. after cleaning. Yeah. A tenth yeah. of the price. Yeah. That epic market is an amazing uh, experience yeah. in of itself and such yeah. nice I people drove, there. I drove past yeah. it this week, actually. Very well run as well. <laughs> yeah. Very well run. Very well run. Yeah. yeah. Well, Andre, amazing thank you. Show. Think, amazing, amazing show. It's a good thank point you, to guys. a good point to wrap it up. There, I just want to reiterate to the guys that are still clinging on that we do have a link to your to your um, Howler page as well as um, all the other breweries that are that are taking part in the super soup kitchen superheroes, whatever we're calling it. Campaign. No, we're not allowed and, to. Yeah, we, I got a <laughs> cease and desist on the name. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to name. So next week, I'm hopefully uh, next week we've got Bruce and I think Fraser and maybe Neil or Nick from Drifter on. But, so it'll be obviously a super focus. So I'll call it superheroes. Try, we're going to try and turbocharge getting money in the brewers' accounts because the brewery will be able to make cheaper food that doesn't have a secondary market that makes it to the location hot. Yep. Job done. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thanks. Thanks for joining, Andre. And Trevor, um, just on closing as well, Thursday, 7 You're a boy, man. <laughs> Thursday, Thanks, Thursday, 7 p.m., we've got another episode of Full School. Do you want to talk <clears throat> us through that, Trevor? <clears throat> yeah, so we are very thrilled to um, have uh, secured John Palmer, and he's going to mm-hmm. probably be talking to us about water. So we're just trying to uh, uh, garner the, the enthusiasm in home brewing and um and so that that should be quite a fun session and these these guys are very approachable these beer people just just showing that uh, the industry remains 99 percent 
also free. So the episode we did with Brad Smith a couple of weeks ago, um, and I know you're referring to me and Andre and uh, some others as the also non-free. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll try and talk with it. <laughs> but that you episode we did, <laughs> that episode we did with uh, Brad Smith from Beersmith on Wednesday a week ago um, was very insightful in terms of brewing and home brewing and the guys that are just starting out into brewing, as well as people that have been brewing for a long time. So uh, yeah, big expectations for for John Palmer this uh, this coming week. And we just uh, hope one day that we can get half as much of the crowd and audience as those fucking bread channels that counts. Sorry, can you say that on the, this show? I'm by yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Andre, go no forth and now. prosper, my friend. <laughs> yeah, in, have, a, have a well-earned yeah. beer. And, uh, thank we'll you. See you yeah, I'm gonna, thank you, I'm Michael. Gonna, David, I'm, lovely to see you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Cheers, chaps. And we'll do fools in October. That's what we'll do. Oh, okay. yeah, definitely. Thanks, David. Got the T-shirt. Oh, we've we've, <laughs> yeah. we've we've got to sneakily possibly pop through and can some of that Priscilla. Hang on, let me just oh. uh, mute you guys and do a closing, and then we can chat. <laughs> guys, thanks very much for joining us. I uh, hope you guys hung on to the end. Some people did. Um, please join in on Thursday, seven p.m. Um, for John Palmer's talk. I think on water we will confirm in the week, and then next Friday, four o'clock again. Friday beers with. Um, some guys more talk about soup, but also talk about beer and uh, any questions you have, we will ask along the way. Thanks a lot for joining. See you guys again soon. Ciao, ciao.